Hello my friends, if you like my work, please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell to be informed about new videos. I'd just like to say thank you to all my patrons, please join them if you can. The link is in the description below. Today in How to Paint series I would like to show you my ways of painting towing cables. For starters, some photos of real vehicles I took some time ago. As you can see, the variety speaks for itself. They can be painted entirely on the vehicle and only with colored ends. Dirty and cleaned. Freedom depends on our needs on the model. I will show you my ways on the example of ropes from several different vehicles. Just wanted to say that today's episode is sponsored by Eureka XXL. For the beginning the Abrams rope, which is also used in other vehicles, so its use is very wide. This will be the version, let's call it clean, which means without mud or other dirt. Just a rope hanging on the vehicle. On this example I will show you exactly how to work with Eureka XXL products from the very beginning to the end. And here we have a set of tools and products which are needed to complete this stage. In the package we usually have metal cables in different amounts, depending on the vehicle we are building. There are resin ends, but sometimes there are also photo etched threads and metal parts. So, first we remove from the resin ends all fillings and supports that are necessary during production. This is best done with a sharp knife and other tools at your discretion. Remember that Eureka resin is very good and therefore friendly to modelers and very easy to work with. Processing doesn't require much force and it's easy and quick. After sanding the resin we can focus on the metal cables. Generally the pieces that the producer puts in the box are a little longer, so you will need to trim them a bit. It's worth remembering to do it with sharp tools because it may end up breaking the tip and having problems with embedding it in the resin end hole. Once this is done, a bit of CA glue is needed to glue the two pieces together. A small drop is enough to create a strong joint. The holes have such a diameter that the rope enters them without a problem and holds well enough. The ropes prepared in this way can be fixed on toothpicks before the next work. Just before starting with painting I first clean them of dirt with model degreaser. Just wipe the elements with a brush soaked in this product. The degreaser evaporates very quickly so after a while you can start further work. Before I cover the ropes with paint I put a metal primer on them for better adhesion. One coat is enough but you have to do it fairly carefully. The base color in most of the ropes I prepare is silver. I apply two thin layers drying them with a hairdryer. For now I don't paint the ends unless they wouldn't also be silver. It's worth remembering that the paint shouldn't be diluted too much, otherwise we will have to put more layers. On the other hand, it shouldn't be too thick because it will cover the rope with too much. Now it's time to paint the ends. I needed a sand color. It may not be perfect camo color, but also consider the contrast that can be created by painting these elements in a different shade than the vehicle. This is an individual approach to the subject depending on whether someone likes building such an effect or not. I like that, that's why I'm almost always painting the ends of the ropes in other shades. When the paint is dry, do a dark wash on the entire ropes and dry with a hairdryer. After that the cables are ready. Remember that the way I've shown now is a very basic method with a minimum amount of resources needed to paint these elements. Don't treat this as the only possible way, because in a moment you will see that there are also other ways to do it. It all depends on the model you are building and the weathering you want to achieve on the model and its individual elements. I can say that, like other elements in our models, it's not a zero-one statement that something should be done in one possible and best way. Check, choose and use what suits you best and what you think looks best.
Here you can see the same method but in a situation where the ropes are already glued to the model, painted entirely silver and I'm just applying a wash. As you can see they are connected by a shackle which is also silver but could be red, yellow or black. Care must be taken during painting and weathering so as not to damage the elements on which the ropes rest or touch. Definitely the hand can't shake. If you are interested, this is the model of Polish Rosomak from IBG. For those who know my channel and follow my projects for a long time, this part will be familiar. If it's your first time here, this is Merkava 2D model. You can find a whole series about this kit on my channel. I decided to use this piece because you can see very well here how you can paint the rope in a completely different way than a moment ago. Let me start with the fact that the rope was already glued to the model and painted like the other elements in the base color. I didn't change its color but immediately painted in green brown giving it a dirty look. I followed the pictures of a real Merkava where the appearance of the ropes very often looks like this. I used silver to paint the ends. The strong rust wash highlights all the creases and please notice that I apply quite a lot of it. After drying I polish the entire length of the rope with a soft pencil. It's worth noting that the, when the rope is glued to the model, reaching all nooks and crannies with the graphite tip can be problematic. Therefore it's necessary to manipulate the model to accomplish this task. And one more thing worth paying attention to. It's on the example of the Merkava that I can show that the ropes can sometimes be painted in completely non-military colors. Here's an example of blue markings. There may also be other colors which is worth checking. This may turn out to be an interesting accent on the model. If we are talking about blue, check the color here. On the example of the rope for Soviet heavy tanks I will show you a method I learned from Adam Wilder. This will be a completely different way than what you just saw on the Abrams and Merkava cables. All the steps up to the moment of painting are the same as you just saw at the beginning, so here in order not to waste precious time I won't show them anymore. We start by painting the entire rope green. Shade at your discretion but better darker than too light. When the paint is completely dry we can start weathering. To begin with we will do heavy chipping with these two colors. The green must be definitely brighter than the base paint. It's best to use sponge for this because it will save time. Painting with a brush in this case of ropes could be too tiring. We will only use it to paint scratches in the eyelets where it's impossible to reach with a sponge. This way the rope should look heavily used and devastated. I will use a few drops of diluted weathering paint to prepare a rust filter on the entire ropes. It's an acrylic paint so I dilute it with uh, acrylic doctor but it can also be done with water. One layer is enough and I speed up drying with a hair dryer. Many thanks to my patrons for the support. You can make something good for humanity so join this group to get access to materials that I post only on this platform. I think it's worth it. Check what level of commitment is ok to you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, write some comment and inform your friends about my models. For the second time I use green paint for chipping and apply small splashes along the entire length of the ropes. I do the same to complete the look with some rust splashes. When the paint is completely dry I can apply sand pigment which is supposed to indicate dried mud. I apply it in a completely random way and then secure it with a few drops of thinner. Strong drying with a hair dryer is recommended. The thinner will evaporate and the unprotected pigment will be blown off the surface of the ropes.
The cables are almost ready. The last thing I need to do is give them a little shine. That's right. Even though they are very damaged from all the steps I've done before, I want a metallic sheen to appear on them. You can do it with a pencil, but here I use gunmetal pigment which is applied with my finger. As you can see, it's not very sophisticated, but I know from my experience that it's enough and the effect will be very good. Finally, I wipe the ropes along the entire length and this is the last work I made. Now it's enough to properly arrange the ropes on the model, which is very easy because the material from which they are made gives us a lot of possibilities to all manipulations. I prefer to do it before I start painting to minimalize manipulations with the finished element, but as you can see it's also trouble free after painting. Finally, a few photos with ropes from my models. Please pay attention to the variety of colors and non-standard arrangement which, contrary to appearances, was and is quite common in vehicles, in service and in combat conditions. Good reference photos will sometimes tell you more than your own imagination. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!